Right, so if we want to find points of intersection, the question here states show that the graphs of y is equal to sin x and y is equal to cos x from 0 to, we are only interested from 0 to pi, which is 180 degrees. We want to find the points of intersection there. Okay. And we were given that point. So let's work it out. So I'm saying y1 equal to y2, so we solve simultaneously. Solve simultaneously. So we have, let's call y1 equal to sine x and y2 is equal to cos x. So now, simultaneous equations, take one equation, substitute into the other equation. So if I take equation 1 and replace y in the second equation, let's see what happens. So now I will have sine x equal to cos of x. So now, if you got sine x equal to cos x, remember from N3, it's an N3 question. How did we deal with this? Oh, grade 12 question. But a basic grade 12 question. If we got sine equal to cos, these angles are the same here. Can you see that? If the angles are the same, I can simplify it. How do I simplify it? I can simplify it further if I got sine equal to cos. If I divide by cos on both sides, whatever I do on the right hand side, I'll have to do on the left hand side. I'm dividing by cos. So what will happen on the right hand side? Cos over cos, that's 1. Sine over cos, sine over cos is 10. So therefore we got 10 of x. So here is our trick equation. Tan x is equal to 1. So now, how do we solve a trick equation involving 10? This one, is it positive or negative? Positive. So we use our cast diagram. Let's go to our cast diagram. That is C A S T. So we know in the second quadrant we have 180 minus your reference angle. This will be 180 plus your reference angle, and this will be 360 minus your reference angle. Okay. So now you got tan x equal to positive 1. Which two quadrants is tan positive in? Which two quadrants? Tan is positive in the first quadrant because all graphs are positive in the first quadrant. Where else is tan positive? In the third quadrant, you see the letter T. T stands for tan and 1 divided by tan, which is cot. That means tan and cot are positive in the third quadrant. Okay. So, our first quadrant solution, your x is going to equal to inverse tan of 1, okay, plus multiples of 180 degrees. Now, I'm not going to write down the general solution here. Your general solution will be plus k 180 degrees, but we don't need to write that down because you can see we are only dealing with the solutions from 0 to pi. So, inverse tan of 1, what do we get? 45 degrees. If I wanted to convert this from degrees to radians, because clearly this is not written in degrees, it's given to me in terms of pi, that means in terms of radians. So, so remember this is in degrees. But it was given to us in terms of radians. How do we convert from degrees to radians? Oh, 
Right, so all you do is to convert from degrees to radians, you are going to multiply by pi over 180 degrees. Okay, it's the same as dividing by 57.3. Right, but let's just be 100% correct here, so that will be 45 times pi over 180 degrees. So, from degrees to radians, multiply by pi over 180. From radians to degrees, I'll multiply by, if I invert this, it will be 180 over pi. Okay. So, what is 45 times pi over 180 degrees? Give it to me in terms of pi as a fraction. What do you get? You get 1 over 4 pi. There's 1 over 4 pi. We just found the point here. Can you see that? Alright, so now remember, 10 is also positive in the third quadrant. So in the third quadrant, what do we use? In the third quadrant, this will be 180 plus inverse 10 of 1 plus k 180 degrees there. So that will be 180 degrees plus inverse 10 of 1 is 45 degrees, 180 plus 45 degrees we get 225 degrees. However, this is not applicable. Why is this not applicable to what we're doing here? It's not applicable because we are only interested in the solutions from 0 to 180 degrees. And this value is over 180 degrees, even though it will satisfy the equation, but it will not satisfy the domain that's our restriction there. You can see that. So now, this is not applicable. <coughs> so now, what is this? This is the x value at the point of intersection. Is that the only thing we're looking for? How do you find the y value? These are simultaneous equations. Once I know what's x, what must I do? Substitute x into any one. Advisable to substitute into both to make sure you get the same answer. Okay. So, let's choose an equation. y is equal to cos x. Let's do both. y is also equal to Silence. We must get the same answer, otherwise if we do not get the same answer, we made a mistake somewhere. So, we want to know, let's see, y is equal to cos of x. What was x? x is pi over 4. Pi over 4 is 45 degrees. Let's do sine. We also got sine of 45 degrees. We don't need a calculator. 45 degrees is a special angle. Okay. Sine of 45 degrees and cos of 45 degrees. What do they both equal to? They equal to square root 2 over 2. This is also equal to square root 2 over 2. Okay. It depends on which diagram you're using for your special angle. But this is with a rationalized denominator. Okay. You can also write it as 1 over root 2. 1 over root 2, you have a square root, so your denominator is not rationalized. Okay. So we have just found that point there. Now, let's say if you did not think, if you did not think of changing from uh, changing uh, sine and cos to tan. What else could you have done here? Let's say you forgot about that. Now let's move to our N4 trig equations. Okay. In N4, when we had sine equal to cos and the angles were different, what did we do? Can I make cos become sine? Can I change cos to sine? Remember this, remember your co-ratios. 
So I got sine of x here. If I want to change cos to sine, this can be written as sine of 90 degrees minus x. What is sine of 90 minus x? Sine of 90 minus x is cos. So now what do I have here? I have sine on the left and I have sine on the right. The left hand side must equal to the right hand side. That means the angle on the left must equal to the angle on the right. So therefore, again I'm dealing with the first quadrant, so therefore x must equal to 90 minus x. The other solution will be in the second quadrant, but we're not interested in that at the moment. Okay. So x is equal to 90 minus x. Simple solve for x. If I take minus x to the left, so that will be x plus x is equal to 90 degrees. x plus x will be 2x equals to 90. So x is equal to 90 divided by 2, which is 45 degrees. So this is an alternate technique for working this out. Okay. Using your co-ratios. Now, obviously once you get your x value, substitute into the original equation, and you get your y values. Okay. Now, let's sketch the graph. Again, this is an N3 type of question. I'm talking about sketching the graph and solving the trig equation. You should know from grade 12 how to sketch a basic sign graph. This is a basic sign graph. Why am I saying it's basic? Because the period here, or the frequency, look at the coefficient of x here. It's 1. That means you're going to have one graph in 360 degrees. What is the coefficient of uh, sine x? What is the amplitude going to be? Also 1. That's, your, that's the first thing that you sketched when you learn the sine graph and the cos graph. So let's sketch it. So now, we need to sketch, we don't have to sketch one full cycle, we are sketching half of a cycle. One full cycle here will be 360 degrees, but we are only sketching up to pi, which is 180 degrees. Okay. Let me give you a few minutes, let's see if you remember how to sketch sine and cos graph. Basic sine and cos graph. It's just sine x, so we know that sine of 0, sine of 0 is 0. What is sine of 90 degrees? Sine of 90 degrees is 1, sine of 180 degrees, 0. Okay, sine of 270 minus 1, 360, 0. That's one full cycle, but our restriction is from 0 to 360 degrees. So. Here's your 90, 180. Okay, that is sine half of your cycle. What about your cos graph? What is cos of 0? When x is 0, what is y? 1. When x is 90, what is y? 0. When x is 180, what is y? Minus 1. So here is your cos graph. That's 90. 180 degrees. So, from 0 to 180 degrees, these two graphs intersect at this point here. So, what is this point? We just found that point. You can see it's half the distance between 0 and 90 degrees, which is going to be 45 degrees and 1 over root 2 or square root 2 over 2. It's the same thing. Okay. That's what we worked out. You can see x is 45 degrees, y will be 1 over root 2. Then. Now, the area, which area are we, are we talking about? 
because there's an area here, area bounded by the curve. These two curves and the x-axis. Can you see that? There's an area bounded by the two curves and the x-axis. Are we looking for this area? No. Read the question. Be careful. The area bounded by the curves and the y-axis. So, the area bounded by the curve and the y-axis, both curves. Okay, there's your both curves here, and here is your y-axis. So, this is the area that we are talking about. There's your y-axis, and here is your two curves there. Okay, so now, what is happening to this area? This area rotates about the x-axis. Okay, so let's write that down. This rotates about the x-axis. Calculate the distance of the center of gravity from the y-axis of the solid of revolution obtained in this way. So, you are not told directly. Must we find the x-coordinates or the y-coordinates? Which one must we find? You don't want to waste your time in the exam looking for the wrong thing. You know when you're answering this question, it will be towards the end of your exam. Okay. So, what are we looking for? What's the key words that we always, I always remind you from M5? Where is it? Calculate the distance of the center of gravity from the y-axis. What are we looking for? Distance from the y-axis is x. Distance from the x-axis is y. Okay. If you're still confused, you're going to have a problem in the exam. You're going to take a guess because you don't understand that the distance from the y-axis is x. Distance from the x-axis, you go moving up, that is y. So we are definitely looking for x here. Okay. So we are looking for the x value of the center of gravity. And we know that on the x-axis, what is y? y is 0. Okay. So now, your center of gravity, we are looking for x. So how do we find x? We take moments about the y-axis, so that's going to be my all over the volume vx. The volume is vx. How did I know that I have to write down x here? It's something that did I work out? No. That's part of the question. It rotates about the x-axis, so it's vx. If it says rotates about the y-axis, it will be vy. Okay. So now, let's write down our formula. Now, delta my. We are taking moments about the y-axis. So the formula for moment about the y-axis will be volume, which is delta vx times the distance from the y-axis, which is going to be x. Okay. Now, what about volume? What is the formula that we're going to use for volume? Now, we need to go and label our diagram. Can you see that? Okay, it all depends on how we label our diagram. So, what we want to try and do is, we want to try and keep, we want to try and use the this method most of the time, or all the time, if it's possible. Because it is less complicated, it will be much shorter than using the shell method. So, if I want to use the this method, what must I go and label the Delta X or Delta Y? Let's say if I put down delta x. Here is my delta x. So here is your delta x. What happens if I use delta y? Let's 
Let's let's have a look at delta y. Okay, if I decided to use delta y, so now this is the area that we're talking about. If I decide to use delta y, here is delta y. Now, this graph has been split up into two areas. Why am I saying two areas? Can you see this point here? What was this point? This was 45 degrees and square root 2 over 2 or 1 over root 2. If you look at this point here, it divides the area into two. Because if I want to work out the length of this representative element, the length from here to here, it touches which graph? Which graph is this one? This one here. This is the sine graph. What did we call it? Y1 or Y2? Y1 is equal to sine x. What graph is this one here? This one Y2 is equal to cos x. Okay. So if I had to use delta y, the length from here to here will be x, but it lies on the sine graph. As soon as I come up now, if I move this representative element up and beyond this point here, there will be another delta y. So now the distance from here to here is x, but it's not the same x as the one in the bottom. Here x lies on the cos graph. Can you see that? So we will have to go and work out the volume from this point to, the, to this point here. And then we will have to work out the volume from year to year, and we have to add it up. In the exam, we don't have time for that. Okay, it can be done, but it will take too long because you're going to work out two separate volumes here, and you're going to add it up. So, what is different about what we're going to do here now? What is the length of this representative angle? It's a representative um, element, your rectangle. The length is the difference between the two y values. Can you see that? If y is 10 here and y is 5 there, 10 minus 5 will give me the remaining distance, which is 5. Now, if I move the representative element anywhere from the beginning to the end, the top graph will always be the cos graph, the bottom graph will always be the sine, no matter where we shift that representative element. Can you see that? So let's label it now. So the top graph, what did we call the top graph? Y2 is equal to cos x and the bottom graph. Y1 is equal to sin x. So now this is the top graph. So obviously sin x is the bottom graph. Okay, so what do we know now? We are using delta x. We decided to use delta x. So what do we know now? We need to write down the formula for volume. We need to remember now. How is delta x related to the, x, to the axis of rotation? Is it perpendicular or is it parallel? See, only a few of you can answer confidently. That means only a few of you will ever answer these questions here. Alright, so delta x is perpendicular. Here's the chair, Here's the, it rotates about the x-axis, here's your x-axis, here is delta x, it's perpendicular. Can you see that? So delta x is perpendicular to the axis of rotation. Therefore, we will use the disk method. So when we are writing down our formula, we need to write down the formula for the disk method. So, it's going to be pi, top graph minus bottom graph. Which is the top graph then? Top graph is y2. We are rotating about the x-axis. Our radius is in terms of y. So it's going to be 
y2 squared minus y1 squared. Don't forget times delta x. That is a formula for the volume multiplied by your distance there, which is x. So now, total. So my is equal to, let's just write this down properly now. So we got our pi here. We are integrating with respect to x. So we're going to use the x values b and a. This is going to be y2 squared minus y1 squared multiplied by x. Delta x becomes dx. So now we need to substitute our values. And we need to substitute. We haven't even substituted yet. So what is our B and A? Where does the area begin? Where does it end? What is the X value at where it begins? The X value at where it ends? So where does it begin? It begins here. You can see that. What is your value here? Zero. Where does it end? Does it end here? No doesn't end here, it ends at this point here. Can you see that? What is this point here? 45 degrees. So we got 45 degrees, 0. So now what is y2? We need to replace y. Manipulate the equation, get y in terms of x because this is dx. What is y2? y2 is equal to cos x, it's all squared, minus your y1 is sin x, all squared, is that all? Don't forget, there's an x here, so we need to multiply by x. So, you can see there's a lot of thinking, I mean a lot of checking you need to do before you even come to this stage here. Okay. In your diagram needs to be correct, you need to understand what is the best thing to do in the exam when you come across a question. Should you use dx, should you use dy? You have to practice and know what to do when you come across a question like this. Here. So now we need to integrate. So now we're going back to our N5 work. Okay. If you can't integrate this, that means you do not know your N5 maths. Okay, and this is, a, this is the 25th of October now. If you don't know your N5 maths now, there's no way. I don't think you can learn it in two weeks. Okay, so. But you'll see when you write DP upgrade test for some of you who are writing. Okay. How do we integrate this? If you decide to multiply cos squared times x and then minus sine squared times x, Separated, it can be done, but it's not advisable in the exam. Now, whenever we are dealing with trigonometry, remember your identities. So, we are definitely dealing with cos and sine here, yeah? you can see that. So, if this was a plus sign, if it was a plus sign, it will be much easier to work out. Cos squared plus sine squared. Okay, most of us know that it's one. Right, so now, but it's not a plus sign, it's a minus sign and there is a formula when you have a minus separating cos and sine. Okay, so the clue is cos squared minus sine squared is one of the three formulas that all equal to the same thing. What is it? What is cos squared minus sine squared? So now you know you didn't uh, know that N4 trigonometry properly. Can you see that? So you carried that problem to N5, which is now carried to N6. If you don't know what's cos squared minus sine squared, what is it? Cos squared minus sine squared? It's one of the three. Which, which formula has three? I mean, three formulas um, equal to the same thing. Which one is it? 
is cos 2x. This is your double angle formula. Okay. So, all right, so you can see it's going to work out much easier now. Cos squared minus sine squared will be cos 2x multiplied by x. Now, how do we integrate cos 2x times x? If I let you equal to 2x, will it cancel it? We have multiplication. Okay. Nothing cancels. There's no exact derivative. So, what is our last option here? Integration by parts. Integration by parts. Okay, which was the last thing we did in N5, the first thing we did in N6. So this is integration by parts. Alright, so we now need to remember our priority list. Right, so integration by parts, you know the formula f of x multiplied by g of x minus the integral of g of x times f prime x dx. So in order to do integration by parts, We have to remember our priority list. Our priority list is for choosing f of x, okay, which you should have mastered by now. Okay. So, which one is f of x? Is it cos 2x or is it x? Yes. It has to be x because x is higher up. Number one is your inverse trig. Number two is log or limb. Number three is your powers of x. This one is number 5 on the list. Okay. So we know that f of x is x there. If f of x is x, what is f prime x? f prime x means the derivative of x, which is 1. So now we need our g of x here. 